So, and then just generally the traits that we see of Gemini's. So we can see more of the positive traits through Grendel's really intense curiosity, especially towards the human world in this chapter, although he despises them, which is also an example of this sort of hip hypocritical duality. And we can also see this indecisiveness in the overall narration of this chapter that sort of refuses to accept one perspective as the truth, which is really very telling of sophism that we'll discuss later. Um, so yeah, throughout chapter three, Grendel details his memory of the human's warfare. However, Rothgar and the Shaper caused the narration to focus more on the idea of peace, and they're sort of painting their own picture of what they want their history to be. All right, so that's sort of it for Gemini. So we're going to move on to the prominent philosophy, which is sophism. And I know we all love philosophy, so like, let's get through this. Basically, sophism is the philosophical argument slash perspective, which is represented in chapter three of Grendel. Ideas of sophism in both modern and ancient times are many, basically because a lot of times they're looked down upon. And now even in modern times, sophism is used as like a logical fallacy, but it is actually like a philosophy that exists. Essentially, sophists are in the business of using language and rhetoric to determine like the philo the philosophical morality of a situation. If you've ever seen that uh, Wizards of Waverly Place episode where they deal with the genie and the genie is like purposefully using their words against them in order to change what they mean, it's, that's sort of what it is. So sophism is a philosophy encur that encourages asking a lot of questions as a way to properly understand each side of a certain moral situation, as well as they'll argue for both sides. Many early sophists were unique in that they refused to take absolute positions on certain topics and could use argumentation strategies to understand or advocate for both sides and so they argue that there is no universal truth which can be applied in every situation so we can see that a lot in like ideas of debate if anybody's a debater you can you really can't control which side you debate for and you have to be prepared to debate for either and then also the same goes for lawyers so a lot of early sophists were early lawyers okay so how are we seeing sophism in chapter three and why is it kind of ironic um, at the beginning of chapter three, Grendel is well aware of the warfare that takes place between the human tribes slash clans, and he goes out of his way to critique their needless violence towards one another without any real reason. And he's, that's the part where he's basically saying he's never seen another species that will just kill for no reason. And we began to see clashes in this idea of duality, specifically pertaining to Sovism, once the shaper visits Rothgar's med hall and sings his tale recount recounting the history, and largely he romanticizes the idea of the years of warfare that the humans have undergone. And Grendel, who spent plenty of time watching humans from afar, he is literally witnessed this entire thing. He hears the Shaper's version of the story and he's nearly convinced. And we can even see this in the ironic name of the Shaper. He's shaping history. He's shaping the ideas of the truth, especially in like a culture such as this one, where everything is based on music and it's based on stories that are passed down from generation to generation. So the Shaper, as he's shaping history, he's gonna do that by telling stories in his version. Basically, in telling, his t in telling his tale atop of the harp music, the Shaper is personifying sophism. Although he's not necessarily using language as his primary means of persuasion, the words which he sings to accompany the music are, key characteris are a key characteristic of sophism. Although everyone in the Med Hall and Grendel are aware of the reality of the situation, the Shaper is able to retell the story in his own version of events, essentially concealing the truth.